Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So a few weeks ago, I asked you guys to send me some suggestions for some scenarios for my OCs to kind of like participate in. And I would take those suggestions and either turn them into illustrations or into, I don't know, like mini comics or something. Basically just drawing out the suggestions that you guys have given me via that community post. So I'm finally tackling those today. So we are quickly starting off on my iPad for the first two illustrations and I do apologize that the footage is going to be a little bit more inconsistent. So I filmed these on multiple different days but a lot of the days I was actually out and about so I was not able to film like a whole good chunk. For the most part, I tried my best to film the majority of the sketching process, so you'll probably see majority of the footage for that. But let's talk about which suggestion I am currently working on and we can talk a little bit more like my thought process alongside with the character dynamics and anything like that that I wish to let you guys know about more about my OCs, I guess. So I'm currently drawing my OC Sato and Moriko which are my two, I guess, like girl OCs, females. And a lot of people requested them having some kind of a girl's night or a girl outing, anything like that. So like shopping, getting boba, hanging out. Um, some people suggested like sleepover as well, or like just kind of like cozy vibes, I guess. I know there's like one specifically that said like a girl's nights together, but there was ones that were a little bit more specific, like like I said, like getting boba or going out to do shopping, painting each other's nails, all that. And I think I got another suggestion a little bit mixed up because I think they requested Akemi to be doing Sato's hair rather than what I'm currently doing. So in this situation or like scenario for my OCs, I have Sato kind of like ordering food on her phone while Moriko's actually like playing and kind of like styling her hair as they're getting ready to do like more of like a winding down girls night kind of thing so that's what i ended up doing so i kind of merged a few people's ideas oh i'm gonna give people a heads up so if you're looking for akemi at all in this video he's not in this one unfortunately and it was not really planned that way but luckily i did draw him last week so you can check out that previous video but the reason why he wasn't in this video is actually because I kind of just ran out of time in terms of picking a scenario and either doing like an illustration or some kind of drawing for him. So I'll definitely do this video again. So feel free to leave more suggestions in the comments or go back to that community post because I will definitely be pulling from suggestions from there again. But so Akemi was supposed to be for like the next illustration in the batch, but I ended up only doing like, let's say three, Three main illustrations is what I'm gonna call it. You'll understand a little bit later in terms of the last one. Oh, but everyone else is pretty much present minus, I guess like Hansuke who is not really included and Selwyn, which I'm gonna save for a later time as well, just because his character design isn't like fully fleshed out either. So I wanna take some time to actually draw him a bit more and get a feel of what kind of character he is, so. Yeah, let's talk about a little bit about the footage that I have here. So I knew that I was going to be out and about for the most of the week. So I decided to take that time to do majority of the coloring process of doing like rough colors, shading, all of that. Oh, also, I hopefully will remember to either put some kind of image to block the upper left hand corner for a little bit because that's gonna be a little bit of a spoiler for the next illustration. All I can say is that it's actually just a drawing of Moriko in the next illustration, but I'm using her as a reference because like I said, I kind of filmed these and did these in such a weird order. So I did the sketch for the first illustration, which is the one that I'm currently working on. Then I did the sketch for the second illustration. Then I did the rough coloring off camera because I was out and about. And then after that, when I came back, I actually started to render the second illustration first, just because in terms of how Procreate kind of puts your images or like your drawings in your folder, it's like the most recent is like at the top of your folder. So I just clicked it open and started rendering. So it's gonna be out of order and I don't really wanna show too much of spoilers. So I'm gonna leave a 
kind of like covering or something at the very top so you guys don't have to be too spoiled unless you guys are just like hopping around in the video you might have skipped ahead which is a-okay by me but i just don't want to spoil people who just want to watch the kind of chronological order for the most part for the illustrations so for the illustration for this one because I totally forgot to talk about it in more detail. So Sato and Moriko, I feel like they are a little bit more like, I don't know, a bit more like cool type, kind of down to do anything, but they're still very like outwardly, a little bit more girly if anything. So if anything, like out of my OCs, I feel like my girls are a little bit more tough and then my guys are a little bit more soft. So. I, I, don't, I don't know if I just like have a preference for that type of characters, but for them, I don't think I've ever drawn them really like bonding or having like any time together. So it was kind of fun to do this and I had a lot of fun just drawing Moriko in general. So hopefully in the future, I will be doing her reference sheet probably next because I've been having a blast just drawing her in general and it'd be nice to kind of like fully flesh out her design kind of like permanently if that makes sense. I feel like for my other characters they have like an outfit that's like standard for them and then I can kind of expand their wardrobe and I definitely want to make sure that I include Kaisen and Moriko into future I guess like drawing my OCs in different outfits because I haven't done that for them. But we are at the end of this particular illustration so I'll quickly go through the time lapse. So I have basically just Moriko tying up Sato's hair because I just thought it'd be cute. Moriko kind of has like shorter hair and I was gonna give her a different hairstyle but I feel like she's not the type to really style it too too like differently but because Sato has like really long kind of wavy-ish hair I thought it'd be fun for her to play with it while Sato is kind of ordering them food and they're deciding between which junk food they would want during their sleepover which is like pizza or fried chicken so yeah, I don't know. That's like usually what me and my friends do anyways, so I thought it would be a little bit more, I don't know, fun to do something similar to what me and my friends would do. Okay, but on to the second illustration. So hopefully I'll remember, I will post a reference of what I'm going to be using as kind of like my main image because I did not know how to pose this particular scene, nor did I know how to draw the certain object. So the next request or like OC suggested scenario was that the person wanted Rico to be driving a motorcycle with Kaisen and him holding on to her for dear life. So I wanted to do this because I think their dynamic would be cute and like I said, I kind of like my tough girls and kind of my softer boys so that's what I'm going to be doing here and I feel like Kaisen is that type to be like, you know, he doesn't want to go fast, he doesn't want to, you know, be super daring or anything like that in terms of like maybe extreme, I guess it's not exactly a sport but it's in that more area where I feel like anything like extreme he's not really down to do. He feels like a little bit more of my low-key character if I can think of it like that. He's a little bit more snarky, a little bit more cold if anything, but him and Masaki are definitely more... Uh, I guess Masaki kind of all over the place, but Kaisen I feel like he wouldn't want to put like too much effort into something if it doesn't yield him like a result that he desires. That kind of vibe if anything, so... I don't know, I feel like Moriko and Kaisen would have a very cute dynamic and how I vision their friendship. So I feel like Maseki, Kaisen, and Moriko would hang out more so than like if I were to put, I guess like Maseki, Kaisen, Akemi, and Sato together. Or it's like Maseki, Kaisen, Koji, or Maseki, Akemi, Sato. I feel like that's like majority of the dynamic I see. Or or also like, I guess, Moriko, Sato, and Akemi. For some reason, I do like grouping them into threes if I can. I don't know why. I just feel like it's a little bit easier for me to envision and manage. But I feel like all of them would get along. But let's talk about the illustration just a little bit before I get too derailed. So for the most part, I am trying my best to reference the motorcycle pose and just like the general idea of the entirety of that photo because I did not know how I wanted to approach this particular piece. So the pose 
for the most part, it's going to be similar to the photo alongside with the motorbike or motorcycle. And the background is going to be very similar vibes, but I did do a little bit of a cop out. So you can see here that I could not really tell what was going on in the motorbike. So usually if I don't know how to draw something, I will pull up several different references. But the thing is, because I lack so much knowledge in terms of just like motor vehicles in general, I don't know if the front of this particular bike is going to have a certain look due to the, I guess like the brand of the bike or the type of the bike or whatever you want to call it. And I feel like that would affect it. So I think I should have just found a very generic looking, uh, motorcycle, motorbike reference for me to just fiddle around with so I could get a better gist of how it is structured because I will end up blurring and doing a little bit of a cop out and luckily it kind of fits with this particular scene just because they are going to be moving at a, I don't know, I guess like a faster speed so I am going to utilize a little bit of Gaussian blur and motion blur to kind of depict that. So. Yeah, hopefully it will make sense a little bit later. But as I'm sketching, I am trying my best to make sure that I am keeping them relatively looking like themselves. Like I said, I guess like Moriko and Kaisen are a bit more of my newer characters. So I haven't drawn them a lot. And oftentimes when I'm drawing Moriko, especially for this entire session and the previous illustration, I will have a reference of her up on the screen just because even though I like to get to the point where I can kind of just do shortcuts and see like the fastest way I can kind of depict my OC so I know what is the most comfortable, I don't want them to look too out of character, especially like if I do like them looking like a specific way and I do like the general like vibe and aesthetic that Rico has in the upper left hand corner's illustration so I don't want to deviate too far away from that if I don't need to and it kind of helps me keep her I guess like looking a little bit more consistent if anything. So I included some text and we're moving on to the rendering portion because like I mentioned I did the coloring of majority of this off screen including the background and all of that. So I'm adding lighting first before we start to render and I'm going to be focusing a lot of the rendering on the upper portion of Rico and Kaisen a little bit where the hands and kind of like the front of the bike but I am going to be blurring the rest, so I'm not going to be wasting my time doing a lot of detail work or rendering of those areas just because if I end up blurring it, there's not really a point as long as I can get like a certain level of detail. So like when I do blur it, it doesn't read too blobular. Like it doesn't read as like a single blob. I want it to still have some kind of form even after when it blurs so that things still look correct in a way. Hopefully that makes sense. But I will definitely take a lot of screenshots of the current community post so that I can make sure to find some of the suggestions that you guys suggested of scenarios or like potential like themes. Some people ask questions for my OCs, so I definitely want to make sure I don't lose those. There's some really fun ones. I think, what is it? I think one was K-pop idol or like them as idols, which would be fun. I haven't drawn Masaki as an idol in a long while, so it'd be fun to revisit that. I think there was one that was like boys night versus girls night. So I would love to do a boy version. And I don't know, there's like a lot of different dynamics I would like to play around with that you guys gave me a lot of ideas for. So I'll definitely make another version of this video where I will tackle those other scenarios. But yeah, I think this is it for the second illustration. I'm adding a little bit of white to the back of the text so it's a little bit easier to read because even though it looks more like a finished illustration, I feel like I wanted to give talk like a little bit of context with a little bit of text. So yeah. Um, oh, maybe I should have give a little bit more context too. So in my brain, I deem Kaisen as the type to get like lost 
I feel like he wouldn't be good with like directions or just like being able to really navigate without like an actual GPS. Even though I've drawn him also with his phone and he still gets lost, but I thought it'd be cute like he's on his way to go see Masaki or somebody and then Riko finds him on like the side of the road being lost and she just picks him up so she can drive him to wherever he needs to be. But he also doesn't really like the bike so he's a little bit scared and he wants to get off the bike. That's the context. Moving along. I decided that I was going to do the last few suggestions as kind of like a comic styled version. So even though I mentioned that I was going to do kind of like three different sessions or illustrations or I guess like three ways to kind of depict the scenarios, this one is going to be combining a few together. Now I do not have a knack for storytelling and I have zero clue on how to format anything relating to comics. So I think that the pacing of this is going to be weird. The text box and just like the general layout of the frames or whatever you want to call these boxes are just going to be very weird. So I do apologize that it's not going to flow correctly. I definitely think in the future, at least for me, I might not post it as like it's a social media post or for a video, but I would like to play around with um, potentially making comics and stuff just of my OCs for fun so I can get a better gist of how I want to potentially make a story for my OCs. So either like manga style with these kinds of panels or do I want to go webtoon style where you kind of like a continuous scrolling kind of thing. But before I get too sidetracked, let's talk about the, I think I combined like four different scenarios together or suggestions. So number one is Masaki and Kaisen teaching Koji to plant something. And a lot of people suggested something like this, like uh, Masaki teaching uh, Koji about plants or something like that, or Masaki and Kaisen teaching Koji. So it's like a bunch of those suggestions. Number two is Masaki comforting Kaisen after dropping a crate of recently sprouted seedlings. Number three is Koji pulling the back of someone's shirt as they walk away, which I thought was a very interesting suggestion, but I managed to include it. And last but not least, Masaki uses a marker while Kaisen is sleeping over or something of that sort. Hopefully I would have screenshotted and put it on the screen somewhere so you guys can see the comment. Um, but I tried my best to combine all four of these just because initially I was just gonna do like maybe like a four panel comic for each of the scenarios, but I feel like it makes a little bit more sense if I were to combine them. But it would have made even more sense if I didn't cut out a whole chunk of different things because I think because it cut out so much the flow of it gets a little bit uh, weird in terms of the pacing so I do apologize that it's probably not going to read probably the way that it should. Also because I was out at a restaurant I was not able to show you guys the line art portion so I'm just showing you how I was formatting things on my iPad. So basically in Clip Studio Paint you can actually do a lot of like the framing and I guess like setting up your panels and everything in a very well done way that's like very organized and easy to I guess like change each panel and separate them very easily but I wanted to import them to my iPad because I knew I was going to be doing the majority of the inking when I was out which I did and I ended up using like a variation of the 6B pencil where I changed the texture to be a little bit less aggressive. I also changed the tapering so it's a little bit, uh, I guess like slightly more blunt in a way. And after that, I ended up doing the shading for the entirety of this little mini comic with the old beach brush because I kind of like the watercolor, almost like ink wash texture. And I was going to potentially convert these into the half tones instead because Procreate does have a function for that and I could have easily done that instead. But I wanted to make sure that I was gonna have enough time. So in order to do that, I decided that I would just chunk in a lot of the shadows and then after that, I will alpha lock those shadows so that I can color on top of the washes and it will retain the texture. And the reason why I need to color on top of the washes is for me to separate some of the values, which you can see I'm doing here. It just helps to create a little bit of depth and separation, especially for like, let's say for Kaisen's clothing, Masaki's hair and apron needs a little bit of separation. 
and it will help me a little bit later to set the environment and background and stuff like that but I tried to make sure to keep everything very clean and very simple so I stuck with majority of like four different tones I guess. I had white, a light gray, a mid-tone gray, and a dark gray and if I really wanted to I could use black but I tried my best to avoid it because it got a little bit too dark. After that I decided to do handwritten text which probably was not the best idea but I did not want to fiddle and try to find some text that would fit well with this potential like comic style so I decided to just use my own handwriting. I kept everything also to be all caps or just like in uppercase letters just to make legibility a little bit easier for people just because I do have a habit of like I feel like my writing's a little bit scrunkly and it's like inconsistent and not very pretty so I thought it'd be easier for people to read if it's all in uppercase for the most part but I do believe that when I started to do the bubbles and just like looking at the text in general it feels a little bit out of place maybe because it's a little bit too bold oh uh, I feel like I should have just done everything in Clip Studio Paint but I in the end I went from Clip Studio Paint for the panel and formatting then I did the inking and the shading on Procreate. Then I re-exported it back to Clip Studio Paint so that I could take advantage of the little bubbles that Clip Studio Paint has. And it just makes things a lot easier for me to make the bubbles plus the little tails for whenever a person is speaking. But I think that's it in terms of the process for this one. I tried my best not to spoil too much as I was working on it. So I'll be showing you guys each one kind of like page by page like this. And hopefully I leave them up on the screen long enough for you guys to read it. Like I said, I feel like the text feels a little bit out of place. One, because my inconsistent writing. Also, the bubbles just feel a little bit too bold kind of because of my thinner lines for my line work so it just feels like it doesn't really fit. It feels like a kid like used a gigantic sharpie and started writing rather than like a person using like maybe like a fine liner <laughs> as they should but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's little session of me doing some of the OC scenarios that you guys have suggested and I really do appreciate you guys humoring me <laughs> with the I guess like requesting you guys to send me suggestions I really do appreciate it and if you have any more suggestions feel free to leave it in the description and if you have any comments or questions about the comic itself I will answer them there because I didn't want to talk about it too much because I didn't want to spoil anything so yeah I think I'm just gonna leave you guys here with the end of the video and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video bye